Back during the Xbox 360 and PS3 era of gaming, there was an entire wave of video games based on movies, especially the MCU. Now this, I would say, trend went back a very long ways of getting games based off movies, but the MCU was fairly new, and games like Iron Man and The Incredible Hulk were actually popping up and receiving mixed reviews. One such game that flew under the radar is Captain America Super Soldier. So we're going to talk about this today in games you forgot about, and for the one person who cares, it's even in 3D. This is one of my favorite eras of gaming, and it has a lot of superhero games that came out in it, or around it I should say, that flew mostly under the radar. It's not that they didn't get any sales, some of them did fairly well, but this was during a time where video games based on movies were on a bit of a decline. It's been a while since I did one of these videos where we took a retrospective back at a game that I feel like a lot of people either forgot about or never knew of, and I think Captain America Super Soldier really fits that bill. A lot of people are always saying, oh, there should be a Captain America game, it should do this, it should do that, and while this game is not perfect, it does actually do a lot of things that I think players ask for now in what they'd want to see in a Captain America game that comes out today. Something that's odd to me about Captain America Super Soldier is that there's not actually a ton of open information regarding the development of the game. A lot of the times nowadays you can find interview after interview after interview, whether it be with Game Informer or IGN or one of these bigger press outlets that deals with games regarding these games. There's not actually a ton of that with Captain America Super Soldier. There is a little though we will get into. This game is actually kind of fascinating because it's often called an Arkham clone. A statement I partially agree with and partially don't. One reason I do agree with that statement is because it does have free flow based combat, very obviously inspired kind of by this Arkham combat, and I say it's inspired by it because it wasn't actually common for superhero games at the time. I would argue some of the Raimi Spider-Man games and a few others, they did have a little bit more rhythm-ish based combat, but a lot of combat in superhero games, especially at the time this came out, was a little more based off of beat em up and hack and slash combined. This game actually did go in the direction that Arkham Asylum went in, of trying to have sort of a free flow based combat, and you would get special moves as you leveled up, and as you got to higher free flow combos. That was very obviously inspired a bit by Arkham Asylum. I will also say that with this game, it takes place in a more remote setting. You are in a Hydra base set in World War II, and it is supposed to tie into the movie. It's taking place after a lot of the events you see in the movie, but in the past. So it's before Cap wakes up at the end of the film, but after a lot of what we see of World War II. Cap's team actually does make appearances in the game and there are a lot of references to them. And one thing that's really interesting about this is they actually got a lot of the voice actors back from the movie. They got Sebastian Stan, they got Haley Atwell, and of course they got Chris Evans. Now, again, this is something that was kind of hit or miss. When it came to video games based on movies or adaptations loosely tied into movies, you would kind of have a, a mixed bag. Like sometimes you'd get back original voices, sometimes you wouldn't, sometimes you'd get back a secondary character, but not the main one. It was actually kind of impressive. They were able to bring in all three of these main key players and actually expand on their stories. There are also a lot of different villains introduced in this game. For example, Baron Von Strucker is actually introduced in this game, and many of you will remember if you've watched any of the MCU movies that he does appear in Age of Ultron. So this is very obviously not canon, but I also don't really think that the developers or even the creators of the MCU at the time really knew what lightning they had caught in a bottle. I don't think they really knew at the time, especially given comments from Kevin Feige years later and Robert Downey Jr. and a lot of these people, I don't think they really knew how big this franchise would get, how big the connected universe would get. A lot of times now the MCU gets clowned on a little bit because people say it's in a decline, it's not as good as it used to be, but I think that sometimes people forget just how big and massive of a juggernaut this entire universe has been for money. And honestly, just for getting butts in seats when it comes to movie theaters. So when they were making this game, they very clearly wanted to tie it into the movie universe of the MCU, but again, I don't think they knew how big it was going to get. I don't think they were really looking forward to try to not conflict with future movies that weren't even on the horizon yet, like Age of Ultron. Because of that, there are a lot of continuity errors, if you can even call them that, that do split this up from that main MCU timeline. 
There's probably some kind of Loki level multiverse example about how this is a variant of Cap and how this timeline went differently. I don't really have that example though. I just think it was a case of not knowing where this whole boat was gonna be sailing. That said, there are some pretty fun performances by the key players from the movie, and it is really cool to walk around this almost Arkham Asylum-like Hydra base doing different objectives. They did add a lot of their own spins to the game though too that I think really go underappreciated. I see people all the time say this is one of the best Arkham clones and I really think that they're saying that mainly because of that free flow combat and the more isolated area the game takes place in. But I really do think that things like the acrobatics are very different than what Batman was doing in Arkham Asylum. There are a lot of places where Captain America is able to platform, and while the platforming itself of jumping from one platform to another is a little finicky, it's a little iffy, not perfect, I do think that the acrobatics are done very well, where you will jump on and swing from one pole to another one, and then you will be able to get to higher surfaces. You're actually able to do all kinds of combat moves with your shield that are very, very unique from anything that these Arkham games were doing. And the only reason I'm bringing up Arkham is to not to be like, hey, he said the thing, he, he brought up Arkham. I know, he makes videos on that. That's not really the point. The point is just that I do agree there are things that were inspired by that, but there's also so much that they did just on their own to differentiate this and not just make some boring clone that I think unfortunately because of the free flow combat and because of the more confined atmosphere, those things get ignored a little bit and it's just considered a clone of a better game. I thought it was really unique how they actually use the shield to have almost a parry system where you can either block enemy hits, whether it be bullets or melee weapons or whatever, or you can use it to parry shots back at people, almost like a lightsaber where you can deflect a shot back at a person who shot it at you but using the shield. In fact, the shield was one of the primary marketing tactics they even used on the box, saying things like wield the shield. They wanted it to be a big deal that you could be Captain America, chuck this shield around, deflect bullets, do whatever you want with it. It was pretty great. And it actually does value player engagement. This is not just a button mashy game. You actually are trying to engage with the combat mechanics. Is it better to actually grab a guy and finish him off with the grab mechanic here and beat him down? Is it better to wait and try and do a perfect parry attack where I knock a bullet back at an enemy? Is it better to just sit, let him wail on you for a second while blocking and then just start punching? These are questions you actually have to ask. And of course, throwing the shield is a big deal in the game. I actually think that this game does a fantastic job with Captain America's shield. It pretty much steals the show. There are things here that I think could have been vastly improved on. For example, there are not very many cosmetic options. A lot of them are late or post game. I believe there's only about three costumes in total. And that's a little boring because they very clearly did want to build on the story of the comic books. I actually do want to play a very, very quick clip from a YouTube channel called The Married Gamers. I wish they still posted because I thought this was pretty good, where one of the main creators actually interviewed writer Christos Gage about the game and his take on it. And he said that 30 years of reading comic books was a big inspiration for this. He said a few other things I'm gonna let play here for just a second as well. How tough is it to write a game to supplement the, the movie version of a game. I know as of late, they've been doing less and less like uh, copy and paste the movie. Yeah, well, because, and that's what we, the case here. The, the movie, the game is set in the movie universe, but it's not the movie story. The research for me was 30 years of my life reading comics, so. That was it. That was my. That was the research. I'm a, a comic book fan and a video game fan, and when I play a comic book video game, I want to feel like the, the hero. I really respect how they actually did try to take the comic book source material and sort of push it in and inject it more into the MCU. Now, obviously, that's already inspired by the comics, but it really does seem like writers like Christos actually did care about getting that source material right. I do also think it's cool how much effort was put into this game. There are multiple versions of it. I played the one for the PS3, and of course with the PS3, like a lot of these ports at the time, my version is a little laggy. I've heard that it runs differently depending on what you're playing it on, but for me that was probably one of the biggest complaints I had with the game is just the performance is kind of bad. This actually seems like a game that would benefit from somebody fixing it up with a PS3 emulator. Kind of like how Metal Gear Solid 4 you know, on the PS3 is a really good game, it's great, 
But now that people have it running in 4K, you know, 60 FPS and all this stuff on PC with emulation, it's a night and day difference. I'm sure that if you were playing this not on its native hardware now, it would probably be a lot better. But even playing it just on the PS3, I found this to be a very fun time. It's something that I definitely recommend picking up if you do have a PS3 or Xbox 360, if you can find it for cheap, you know, like maybe $20, $25, because it does have a lot of content. The Platinum was not hard to get, but I also could tell that they actually tried on the lore, story building, and the world just in general, because you do find a lot of very cool collectibles. You interact with a lot of iconic villains, even Madam Hydra making an appearance here, but a different version of Madam Hydra than the one we later see in the MCU. It's just got a lot of creativity to it that I really do appreciate. And honestly, it's kind of what I like to see out of movie games, ba games based on movies, because a lot of the times it's kind of difficult when you try and do a one-to-one -one adaptation of a movie into a game. I think that's often what leads to just bad games. Some of the best games that I can think of that are based on movies, things like even modern day Robocop Rogue City, things like the Spider-Man 2 Raimi game. A lot of these games, what they did was they would either base it on the movie and they would use general events from the movie, but also add in more, like what Spider-Man 2 did, or they would do what Captain America did and what Robocop did, and they would tell a supplementary story that adds on to a movie without detracting from it, ruining it, or just being a one-to-one -one copy. That's something I would love to see more from games like this, and I do think that there is a place for games like this if they are made well, if there is a budget behind them, without, of course, them being overly inflated or just given the B-movie treatment. Overall, I feel like some people are very hard on this game, some people give it a lot of credit, but for what it is, it's pretty fun. Yeah, it's not groundbreaking, it's not really super innovative, but I do think that the shield work is done very well. I do think the setting is actually unique and interesting. It plays well off of the themes and the iconography and locations of the film while doing its own thing. I mean, a lot of video games based on movies are just a copy and paste that are pretty boring, or they try and fill in so many gaps that they just become a mess. Captain America Super Soldier, it went a good route, a route not enough games go, where it was based off of the movie, but it did its own thing and added on to that hypothetical universe. Yeah, long term with the MCU canon wise, does it work out? Not really. But for what it is and when it came out, I think it's pretty fun and it's worth giving a shot to. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I enjoy this game, but some people seem to hate it. Some people seem to love it. I think it's fun, so I'm interested to hear your takes. If there are other games you want me to cover, whether they are superhero based or not from the past, you know, on games you forgot about or things like that, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. I also do want to return a little bit as well to rejected media. So if there are ideas you have for, you know, deleted scenes that would have added to movies or games, things like that, I'd love to make those. Also, if you have ideas for the series, Whatever Happened To, we've talked about Star Fox and we also talked about Simpsons games. I'd like to go back to that as well and kind of talk about game series that have just fallen off. So a lot of things I'm interested to hear your takes on. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I really do appreciate you guys very much. It means the world to me that you guys watch my videos sincerely. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic day. And as always, everyone, stay shway.